I don't know about this hat, but we're doing it. Hi guys, it's me, Pauline, the Awkward Domestic, and I am coming to you once again uh, to share all things awkwardly domestic. Stick around, because today we are going to be talking about super easy house plans. Oh, hey Jiggy, cat walking through. <laughs> Let's try again. Uh, today we are going to be talking about house plants that are indestructible. Like, I swear guys, you cannot kill some of these plants. Not even if you try. And trust me, in the beginning, you would have thought I was trying. If you wanted to adopt a puppy, before you got it, what would you do? You'd probably go online, you'd look up the breed, how much care it needs, how much activity it requires, whether you have to brush it every day, if it loves to nap, or if it needs to be taken out for a run every day. My rule of thumb is do the same with your house plants. Uh, I have some house plants that are way more persnickety, that have a lot more care uh, requirements. These plants are so rooty. And I also have some set it and forget it house plants. And to be honest, they are equally as beautiful. We are gonna start with my first ever plant. I got this plant uh, about five years back from my roommate Doug. He brought it home as a rescue. And to be honest, I didn't really pay attention to it. I love the fact that it's self-propagating. So I have seven other aloe vera plants that all came from this original plant mama. And what happens with aloe vera is if you're taking care of it, which basically means giving it water when it's bone dry uh, and leaving it alone in the sun, it will produce for you. So after a couple of years, it will start popping out pups that start as these teeny tiny little guys. But if you want to, some people leave them all together. I like to separate them out and watch them grow on their own. This was actually the, uh, my aloe vera's first baby. And since then, it too has produced pups that are already this big. Aren't they adorable? So aloe vera needs. Water it, let it dry out, uh, and then water it again. Make sure it's never sitting in water because they hate that. It's sort of like babies in poopy diapers. You wouldn't want to sit in that, your baby wouldn't want to sit in that, and neither, uh, neither do any of your plants, really. Um, the next plant I want to talk about is super cute and comes in a ton of varieties. And that is this darling here. Mother-in-law tongue, uh, they're also called snake plants, which is probably the most common name for them. And I think their like technical name is Sansevieria or something. Uh, but I have a ton of these in different varieties. Um, I love the coloring on this, but and the size, because this is like more compact. But I also have ones that are way taller. It's about three and a half, four feet tall. Uh, and thinner, different shapes. Darker, uh, uh, watching their roots is a really beautiful process. And you might be able to see in here that he's sprung just the prettiest root, right? These guys are incredibly resilient. You don't have to water them very often. They do not need a lot of light. You can set and forget. Um, I actually have snake plants all throughout my house in the darkest corners and they're all thriving. I, I think I actually forgot to water one for like two and a half months. I know. What? And you call yourself a plant lady? I can't do it. Uh, after two and a half months it had like two uh, little brown tips and that was it y'all like they are really forgiving so if you kill one of these guys stick to plastic ha the ZZ plant ha! look at how gloriously shiny all of these leaves are aren't they perfection this is actually a relatively small ZZ plant because I know they get really really large. Fun fact, right now at Ikea, you can get one of these little guys, maybe like three quarters of the size, for $10. I kid you not, they're incredibly affordable 
and it will grow for you. They're super hard to kill. ZZ plants work really great in low light situations. So if your home doesn't have a ton of light, get yourself a ZZ plant. You're welcome. Let's get in to the hanging plants. Here we have some pothos. Pothos are basically indestructible. Uh, this little basket of pothos is actually um, just a bunch of clippings that a lady gave me when I got my um, fiddly fig uh, from her. So it was basically a gift with purchase. And the reason you're like, whoa, that's a nice plant for like gift with purchase. But the reason you can afford to give pothos away like that is because they grow so vigorously. Here I have a couple different varieties. You can probably tell if you look at the leaves, there's like different variegation. And I have some in here like this, like the Marble Queen pothos, which is pretty good. And then this is just like, the green pothos. Um, I think there are actually three different varieties in here. I don't even remember what they're all called. The reason this one's growing so rampantly is because it's sitting in the sun. I, I haven't even had it for that long. I, if you follow me on Instagram, you probably saw I picked up this flower pot like what? A month and a half ago and this thing was tiny and it's already growing up. It's put out a ton of new leaves. I'm really proud of it. All right. So like I said, if you don't have a lot of light, there are plants for you. Uh, ZZ plant, the pothos, and you can do any of the pothos varieties and it will be absolutely fine. Uh, the San Severia, uh, aka snake plant, aka mother-in-law's tongue, those are all going to be great options for you and you can find those in a ton of different sizes, uh, textures, colors, uh, or variegations, whatever. Uh, look up the fancy names because I don't know. If you have a ton of sunlight just streaming into your house, then definitely try out an aloe vera because they're way more resilient than you think. Uh, I can't wait to hear what you pick up. Uh, happy planting! Colleen, aka, oh god. AKA, oh god!